my dear colleagues, welcome to another Inget Zoom series. Today, our guest is Professor Dr. Esim Gursoy from Bursa Uludağ University. Esim Hocam has uh, more than 70, I believe, research articles in international journals. She has authored and edited books and uh, also the author of several book chapters. Uh, her research interests include teaching English to young learners, uh, pre-service and in-service teacher education, teaching practice, and integrating socially responsible teaching to ELT. This evening, the title of her talk is Reflection on Action, Clinical Supervision Model for Professional Development. Thank you, dear Esimo Jam for being our guest and uh, welcome again. Thank you very much, Aydan uh, It's all yours. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here with the, the Inget family, with colleagues and uh, former students, current students. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to be here uh, with you and share what I have prepared for you. Um, well, let me start sharing and can you see my screen right now yes, yes. okay okay good i'm going to go big yes as uh Ida Nujan mentioned um to tonight i will be talking a little bit about the role of reflection uh, in professional development and how it is kind of related with the teacher education process i will be focusing mostly on prospective teachers and the practicum process how reflection is implemented and can be used during the, the process with a model that we have been using since 2018 and i'll give more information about what the model is, what we're doing on um, uh, pra during practicum, and how does this clinical supervision model support professional development of prospective teachers as well as in-service teachers. So uh, since we have uh, participants, uh, colleagues uh, from Ministry of National Education, I wanted to go back to the basics and start with what reflection is, where uh, it come from, comes from and um, what we should expect uh, when we talk about reflective teaching. So actually it goes back to Descartes. Uh, it lays its roots in Cartesian thinking. And then reflection was also echoed by Socrates and Freud. Um, it is actually a positive activity that results in self-understanding and knowledge of the self. Um, well, if you look at the flow of how this reflective process reflection uh, has developed is that it starts with self-awareness uh, during Descartes uh, and Cartesian thinking, and it turned out to uh, understanding oneself and uh, having a knowledge about our own selves. Then it turned into uh, the development of the second self and it results with the self-actualization. Uh, well, in the field of education, the term goes back to Dewey and Shun. Uh, according to Shun, reflection is a direct result of practice. For Dewey, it's the type of knowledge which has been based on scientific approaches. As you see, Shun underlines the importance of practice uh, for reflection, and Dewey underlines the importance of uh, science or scientific approaches and knowledge developed upon scientific approaches. So one is more theoretical, the other one has a more practical uh, point of view when it comes to reflection. Uh, I like this very much, uh, this quotation from Dewey. Uh, he says that we do not learn from experience, but actually we learn from reflecting on experience. So all of us have countless of experiences every day when we go in our classes and uh, be with our students, with our colleagues, you know, preparing our lesson plans and teaching process implementation. We always have lots of lots of experiences but the minute 
uh, we just move on to the next stage and stop and think about what we did in the classroom, how well it went, what we expected, then it is actually not of very much use. So uh, the experiences doesn't mean anything unless we stop and think about those experiences. So who is this reflective teacher? Who are we referring to? Uh, what are some um, features of this reflective teacher? Well, a reflective teacher is the one who critically examines his or her practices. So this uh, critical objective uh, approach or mirroring to oneself is actually very important in the process of reflection. So this teacher has to be very critical when examining. So usually when I'm talking to my prospective uh, teachers, when I ask them how their lesson went and what do you think that um, was good and what do you think that they would change if they had another chance to, uh, to teach the same class again, well, the first thing that most of them say is that teacher I have been planning on this lesson for a week I have spent days and hours and nights on selecting our materials finding our activities uh, it was very tiring it was very difficult and I think I did my best and I know and I believe that they did their best but actually how did it go we always when we enter the classroom we get into the classroom with our best plan or uh, the ideas that we think is going to work uh, the best with our students. However, things change when once you're in the classroom. A little thing um, that is disappointing or interrupting, unexpected, could change the flow of the lesson. And then we have to um, start our critical teacher decision-making process to overcome that problem, whatever that is. Or it could be something happy. It doesn't have to be always negative, but it, it affects it, and it, it influences the way uh, we teach. Therefore, it is very important that yes, my plan is supposed to work well, and I worked well on my plan, but how did my students react to it? Was I able to reach my objectives? So this kind of questioning about the actions, implementations, decision making and the results and the outcomes of those is going to tell us actually how well uh, we did during our classes. So this teacher, this reflective teacher, also develops some ideas to improve his or her teaching to enhance the student's learning. So it's not like I did it and this is the best. Uh, the teacher continuously tries to develop some ideas. What can I do more to enhance the learning uh, of the students? How can I improve my teaching? What else can I do? What uh, kind of changes, um, additions that I need to make on my plan and teaching. Well, planning is not the only solution. Being aware of what is necessary is not adequate. Well, the next step for the reflective teacher is the ability to put these ideas into practice. So we could make perfect plans, but plans that are written on a paper and the plans that are implemented could be different. So actually, uh, when we see a problem or a point that needs to be delved on uh, deeper and more uh, during the lesson that we need to actually find a solution to it, then we need to uh, implement that solution so that we could put our ideas into practice. So. Um, the, the title of today's um, speech was Reflection on Action. So let me, let me tell a little bit about what uh, we mean by reflection on action. Well, Sean, Sean differentiated reflection in action and on action. So as you can just uh, guess from the, the title, reflection in action happens, occurs, uh, while we're teaching, while we're in the classroom. We always have very critical decision-making processes that's going on. Sometimes these are conscious and sometimes these are instinctive, but this is a very personal process. It is done by the teacher himself or herself. There's no one else there to, uh, to help us do this uh, reflection. And it usually starts with a problem. 
However, reflection on action is done after the teaching process. And usually this is practiced collaboratively uh, at schools uh, with the help of other colleagues that we could ask one of our colleagues to come and observe our lesson and then maybe give us feedback afterwards so that we could improve our lesson plans. And this could also be practiced again collaboratively in teacher education institutions like the faculties of education uh, during practicum where the university supervisor and the cooperating teacher gives uh, feedback to the students for reflection. And again, it starts with a problem. Um, let's go back to the methods era and how it evolved uh, since today. Well, during the method era, teachers uh, actually implemented what the methods dictated. Um, they didn't have much influence or didn't have a voice on the ways uh, methods were formulated in academic circles. So it was mostly theoretical. Academicians were uh, thinking about theories and then uh, driving some methods, uh, relying on those uh, theories, and then they would think that, oh, this is going to work. This should work in the classroom. And the teachers would have some uh you know approaches or methods some principles to be carried out in the classrooms um, however this relationship between the theoretician and the practitioner was top down so um the teachers had little critical voice well the theories the methods were developed for the teachers but the teachers didn't much uh, of a say in what has been developed. So yes, theory is important, scientific knowledge is very important, but it should also be reflecting the realities of the, the, the real classroom. Um, the theoretical knowledge during the methods era was viewed as more valid and prior to procedural or practical knowledge. So we could say that during this era, language teacher education was in a state of crisis. So we needed a change of orientation in teacher qualifications and competencies uh, as quickly as possible. Well, reflective practice was a consequence of past method debate. However, there had been some flows of the process. Let me let me tell some of those uh, as well. Um, despite the attempts to give more voice to teachers' uh, knowledge, language teacher education has embraced the concept of reflective teaching without much reflection. And Akbari mentions that some major theoretical and practical flows in the concept of reflective teaching uh, was coming from uh, historical and practical viewpoints. From a historical and a theoretical viewpoint, um, there's no common agreed upon definition of reflection. And it is kind, it has a kind of um, retrospective uh, nature and it is not like paving the way toward creativity. Current reflective models in alpha teacher education lack the necessary critical dimension. Um, well, we said that reflect to be reflective, we need to be able to look mirror ourselves critically and while we're doing this we need to kind of reduce the bias that we have on us if possible uh, should refrain from any self-bias because what we see in the mirror could actually be different from what is actually happening or what we think is happening. Therefore, um, the objectivity is a skill that needs to be developed during the, the reflective process, reflection. So let's have a look at what had happened, what were some arguments, complaints from a practical viewpoint. 
Well, there is no published evidence to show improved teacher or student performance resulting from reflective techniques. So it was all theory. Yes, reflection is important. Reflective teaching improves professional development, but uh, the published evidence then was kind of um, inadequate or we didn't have much. Nowadays, we do have some. The personality of teachers uh, was a missing variable in almost all uh, discussions of reflection. Because reflectivity requires some sincerity as well on the part of the person. So let's think, what do we see when we look at the mirror? Are we looking at the mirror as a cat and see a lion instead? Or uh, can we actually see the cat as it is when we look at it or the lion as we are. And how can we help the prospective teachers and or, well, and the in-service teachers to become more reflective? What's the benefit? And if there is one, how do we help them to be more uh, reflective? Let's have a look at the, the teacher training process and the, the reflective practice. Well, uh, the teaching, what, when the students uh, could do reflection uh, is kind of limited to the last year of the, the faculties, the senior year of the faculties of education, uh, which is actually mostly limited, but not exclusively limited to teaching practice. And this uh, process requires some supervision of the university teacher trainers, as well as the cooperating teachers at the Ministry of National Education, it's state schools. The process should be kind of carried out through observations. But here, observation is not just looking at the person that is teaching in front of the board, but at the same time, collecting objective data to provide um, indirect feedback to the students, to the prospective teachers, uh, to be aware of uh, their weaknesses and strengths, which is then, which should be then followed by the feedback. The feedback in this process should never be direct. Usually in the past, when I think of my own teaching practice experience with my uh, teacher trainer at the university, what he did was he just kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, Essen, you're going to be a great teacher. I believe in you. And I think um, this was a good lesson. And I never knew why that lesson was good why what I did um, good to take this compliment. And I never knew what was missing in my teaching. And I'm sure there was something missing in that teaching. All I had was congratulations. And this is not helpful. As a teacher, I would like to know more about my teaching. I would like to know what can I do more or how can I improve myself? I'm, a, I'm not even a graduated uh, student, but actually uh, this kind of feedback gave me some self-confidence and motivation and nothing else. I would not say that I was ready to teach in a classroom. So the feedback is important, which we will be talk about uh, how to give, how to provide that feedback and what should be some features of that feedback. The feedback process should definitely uh, result in uh, reflection. And this reflection should be done by the teacher. It doesn't matter whether uh, he or she is a pre-service teacher or an in-service teacher. The, this reflection process should be carried out collaboratively by uh, sharing the objective data that the supervisor and the cooperating teacher collected and shared it with the, the teacher. Actually, let's have a look at the, the, the teaching practice in Turkey to, to understand what has changed and why we are using a model called clinical supervision model today uh, since uh, 2018. Uh, most of us would remember the education reform in 1997. As a result of this reform, there have been a lot of renovations in the, the curriculum of uh, education faculties. And um, 
Together with uh, the World Bank, the Ministry of Ed National Education um, had a project uh, development of uh, the, which required the development of the, the quality of teaching. And as a result of this collaboration, uh, a lot of the academicians were trained, a lot of the teachers were trained abroad uh, to become better teachers. And uh, one of the products of this process was um, faculty school cooperation which kind of uh, made the, the teaching practice a more systematic one, which was random before 1997, 1998. Then uh, after this uh, education reform, it became more systematic. Um, as a result of that, the teaching practice was the last semester of the senior year, and it was about six hours. And um, one difference was that uh, the faculty school cooperation booklet kind of uh, identified the responsibilities of the stakeholders. By stakeholders, I'm referring to uh, the process participants at macro and micro levels, like the, the faculty coordinator, uh, the ministry coordinator, the supervisor at the university, cooperating teacher, as well as the prospective teachers. They all had role definitions, responsibilities, definitions. However, although this was kind of new, and it was kind of a breakthrough in the in the history of teaching practice in Turkey, but um, how these participants, how these stakeholders would carry out these responsibilities were not identified. Everybody knew their roles, but nobody knew how they're going to carry out those roles. So that was the missing element uh, in this renovation. Again, cooperation was emphasized, but now, but not how it should be established between the school and uh, the faculty supervisor and um, the cooperating teacher. The importance of feedback was underlined, but not how it should be given. So when you look at the last two decades, uh, we have seen that nothing was done to revise the process, although there had been a lot of research studies all around Turkey, which reported the deficiencies of the system. For 20 years, uh, all of my colleagues at different universities conducted research on the effectiveness of the teaching practice, and we all have determined certain uh, weaknesses of the process, but for 20 years, nobody touched it. Um, the problems that were identified so far in the literature uh, of the Turkish academia uh, aroused from different um, centers, different uh, stakeholders, as well as the process. Related with the university supervisor, mostly the prospective teachers were complaining about the amount, quality, and the content of feedback. And um, the students were also complaining about inadequate observations. And in some cases, some said that they never uh, were observed by their uh, teacher trainer. Also limited cooperation or even no cooperation with the cooperating teacher was uh, mentioned. That the process, that the supervisor was not supportive and it was kind of distant, that there was this distance where the, the prospective teacher and the supervisor um, kind of distanced themselves from each other, where in contrast, uh, the expectation would be some collegial uh, relationship where uh, during which they support each other. Some of the other problems arose from the cooperating teacher. Uh, the, most of the time, the cooperating teachers consider training uh, to be the supervisor's responsibility. They would say that, no, okay, uh, dear teacher, you do it. This is your student. My class is your class. And don't you know, make me say anything uh, to give feedback to your student. Similar to the supervisor, the amount, the quality, and the content of feedback was criticized, given by the, the cooperating teacher. 
um, not giving teacher trainees enough opportunities for teaching practice, you know, not enough practice uh, was also other complaints coming from the cooperating teachers. There were some problems arousing from the prospective teachers as well. Uh, the research was emphasizing that the prospective teachers were not responsible. They were not carrying out their responsibilities, mostly concerned with the KPSS exam. And they would think that uh, practicum is, um, is a course that they will all pass out. There were no hardship, you know, kind of um, expectations. That's why they were uh, not responsible. Uh, the teacher trainees were mostly observing the cooperating teacher, and they were uh, they had limited teaching practice, and unfortunately, uh, they were not developing the teaching skills necessary for them or expected of them to develop uh, during the, the process. There were also some problems arising from the process itself. Um, the process didn't clarify how to establish cooperation at macro and micro levels. And it did not provide the stakeholders with the information on the supervisor process and the required supervisor skills. This was you know, uh, mostly random. Uh, when you look at different universities uh, and different departments within the same faculty, the supervisors, even the, at the supervisor level, everybody was doing what they think is the best. But we were not consistent uh, in our decisions, the way we, we give feedback, the number of observations that we had, or um, the relationship that we built. So it was kind of a random process. And the supervision that the prospective teachers receive de was dependent uh, on the supervisors or the cooperating teachers abilities to supervise. So, well, we had another educational reform. Uh, and after that, in 2018, uh, the Higher Education Council uh, also renewed our curricula as well. During this process, um, Higher Education Council, together with the Ministry of National Education, uh, decided to use a more uh, uh, elaborate model that would facilitate or that would overcome the complaints that both the supervisors, the cooperating teachers, and the teacher trainees were um, wording out. So let me let me give a little bit about this model and then I will tell you how this model was you know being used. Well, this is not a very new model. It goes back to late 60s and early 70s and developed by two academicians at Harvard University, Goldhammer and Kogan. The the basic idea of clinical supervision uh, was to focus on data collection process during observations. Kogan developed and supported clinical supervision and took attention to the importance of professional interactions between the stakeholders to help teachers' professional development. Uh, originally, the model uh, was used for in-service teachers. Um, so that while uh, we are teaching in the classes, you know, with, in Turkey now, the, the principal, school principals are responsible of observing their uh, teachers like once, at least once a semester and give feedback uh, to the teacher. So this was used like a professional development process in uh, in-service training earlier. Uh, the purpose of clinical supervision, thus, is to help teachers develop and improve through cooperative planning, observation, and feedback. Um, the teacher trainees have negative expectation regarding supervision as if it is designed to 
only point out deficient areas in their teaching practice. So it is like negative criticism most of the time. Uh, you could be better in this, this areas. I liked your materials, but the way you use your that material, I think you need to uh, change it or you need to do this, you need to do that. This was lacking in your teaching. Kind of negative expectations uh, were there on the minds of the, the prospective teachers. However, the clinical supervision model is designed to involve the prospective teacher or the teacher trainee and make them a part of the evaluative process. Uh, with the use of CSM, behavior of teachers could be improved. The reflectivity in and out of classroom could be increased if cooperating teachers had equal status with the supervisor. And if you remember, this was one of the complaints that uh, we have received. Once an enhanced interaction and a democratic atmosphere is created, the teacher's performance and later the student's learning performance would be improved. Now, let's see what supervision is. Tell me if you cannot hear or see this. There's a very short video here. Here's what's going to happen. I am going to have to fix you, manage you to on a more personal scale, a, a more micro form of management. So actually and obviously, uh, I'm going to manage you at this and that level is not what we understand from supervision. I changed my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, okay, good. Um, so the clinical supervision model uh, is a cyclical model that has five steps that goes around, you know, whenever you think that you're finished with it. So the pre-conference, pre observation and data collection, data analysis, post-conference and reflection are the five steps of this model. Well, uh, if I have to answer, how this model was, you know, has become popular and is being used by the Ministry of National Education and the Higher Education Council is that we at Bursa Uludağ University um, had a Tubitak Evrena project uh, several years ago, which finished in 2015, uh, during which we have implemented clinical supervision model with our students, which was a quasi experimental study. And uh, the data collection lasted like two years, and thousands of hours of class observations, interviews, data collection was done. And as a result of that uh, project, we have found out that clinical supervision actually works if we want to help students develop their teaching skills, um, be a reflective teacher, uh, as well as during data collection, giving indirect feedback uh, throughout the process. So when we started publishing on the benefits or the actual results of clinical supervision model, somehow Higher Education Council read some of those and they contacted uh, me during the process and they also referred me to the Ministry of National Education. And it is when and how I started working with the Ministry of National Education in the development of the new uh, practicum uh, process. Uh, while we were working with the Ministry of National Education, we have um, trained more than 300 uh, teachers. Ayla Hojan would know that better, the number, uh, as formator or Ritman. And then these formator teachers uh, went back to their cities. Uh, and in total today, we have about 95,000 teachers who received uh, supervisory uh, training that is related with the clinical supervision model. So now, uh, during teaching practice, the cooperating teachers are using this model to supervise our students, uh, prospective teachers at faculties of education. So uh, 
the Ministry of National Education made it compulsory for the cooperating teachers to receive this training and they had a certificate. The teachers without the certificate can no longer uh, serve as a cooperating teacher uh, and carry out the supervision process with our students. This model at each step requires certain techniques to be used to have uh, a more effective process. If you remember the earlier model lacked how we will implement, uh, how we will use uh, or carry out our responsibilities. So the model kind of defines what to do and how to do throughout the process. So data analysis, post conference and reflection um, are the other steps in this model. So why this model? This is one of the many models uh, that we could have chosen. But the reason why we have selected this is because it is compatible with reflective teaching pedagogy. And it's a cyclical process that contributes to professional development. Systematic observation and feedback process not only helps teacher trainees, but also the supervisor and the cooperating teacher to reflect on themselves as well. This was not an expected result during our project, but uh, we have found out that while trying to make um, objective observations and giving feedback, the majority of the cooperating teachers said that they have identified their own weaknesses and strengths while uh, giving feedback to the teacher trainees and they found it very beneficial for their own professional development, which they were not the target. So it was kind of, uh, there was kind of a mutual benefit uh, between the teachers as well as the teacher trainees. Uh, the CSM frees the teacher training process from being random and dependent on individual supervisors or the cooperating teachers' skills, teaching skills or knowledge about the, the profession by being systematic. Another reason why we have used CSM is it lists and informs us about uh, objective data collection. It gives uh, several techniques that we could carry out um, objective data collection. Uh, this facilitates the systematic observation. It's not like looking at the student and you know, writing whatever we want. This is more targeted uh, observation, uh, more systematic observation that uh, is going to be used at the post-conference while we are giving feedback. The techniques cover a wide spectrum from general observation of the teaching learning process to very specific skills, like even the, the classroom traffic, or the, the interactions of the student and the teacher, the questioning skills. Uh, the model facilitates the self-evaluation of the prospective teacher and increases self-awareness, facilitates the feedback process given by the supervisor and the cooperating teacher. CSM alters the roles of the supervisor and the cooperating teacher and the prospective teacher into more of a collegial relationship where the trainee can use the supervisor and the cooperating teacher for both uh, reflection and as a resource for improvement. Another reason is that CSM involves communication techniques as well that can be used during post conferences. Uh, I have said earlier, I mentioned that usually uh, teacher trainee sees this feedback as negative criticism so that we have to use certain techniques to break down this negative expectation of the teacher trainees. CSM provides us with a list of techniques that we can use while we are giving feedback. Of indirect feedback that needs to be underlined, I assume. And uh, that would help the trainee to identify his or her own weaknesses and strengths. Uh, when we give the ball to the trainee, uh, the trainee also learns to gain autonomy on their teaching. So they can regulate their teaching as well as their learning from the process. Self-evaluation uh, thus is very important to make action plans. 
The action plans are person specific, very idiosyncratic, thus helps us to conduct a needs-based observation. Let's say if I have like 12 teacher trainees, the feedback that uh, they would receive would be individual and very needs specific. So they could find specific areas for development improvement um, that are going to help them personally. The CSM also contributes to the systematic interaction of the cooperating teacher and the supervisor. Three-way or four-way conferences require the cooperation of the supervisor, cooperating teacher, while giving feedback. These conferences uh, encourage cooperation and engender a feeling of collegiality among the stakeholders. All the stakeholders make decisions together during action planning. It's not uh, I, what I say as a supervisor to the trainee, uh, to do, or uh, it's not just the cooperating teacher tell the trainee what to do, but three of them decide together what would be best uh, to implement change next time uh, the trainee teaches. This kind of systematic interaction also uh, provides equal or um, responsibility. Uh, enabling the teacher trainee reach at the expected standards and qualifications. The process also helps the trainee learn from his or her own experiences and gives him the responsibility to learn and develop himself. Let's have a look at the, the steps of the CSM. Uh, the, the first one was pre-conference. This is the time when the trainee shares his detailed lesson plan with the cooperating teacher and discusses issues related to teaching strategies, methodologies that they're using, the classroom management, uh, the selection of materials, the students' needs, or whether there are special needs students in the classroom and how to approach them, the activity selection, and many other related uh, classroom planning. The second step is data collection. So, what is it? Welcome to another fabulous day of professional development. This room needs a little infusion of excitement. <laughs> I think I know just the thing. That's right, it's data. What else can drive all teachers' actions? Data, oh data. Come on, give me that data. From Sunday to Santa, you best not forget that data, oh data. Data, that's it. Come on, give me that data. From Sunday to Santa, everyone give me that data. Obviously, data collection is important, but emphasizing how important it is is not enough. We need to be able to collect it. So the second step, the observation and data collection process should be non-judgmental and uh, should involve systematic observations of the teaching. Uh, both the supervisor and the cooperating teacher collect objective data via data collection techniques as suggested by CSM. And we need to avoid as obse observers making judgments or subjective comments about the performance. We could never say, I think this was a wonderful lesson. I think this is very good. Um, you've aced it. I loved your lesson. I didn't like your lesson at all. What was this? These are all personal. These are all uh, subjective. And this is not going to help. Either negative or positive, doesn't matter. We need to avoid uh, judgment so that the trainee could see from the actual data what he or she has done. The third step is the data analysis. Uh, here, without we, uh, before we meet with the teacher trainee, both the supervisor and the cooperating teacher um, goes through the data that they have collected by using the techniques of the CSM and use that data to give formative and summative feedback. They both identify strategies for imp improvement, but they never say it directly help or guide the, teach, uh, the trainee um, to, to find it for themselves. So yes, the feedback is definitely important. Right, so, right. so what? So I wanted to talk to you about the phone call. 
apology necessary. Everyone's allowed at least one mistake. You've used up yours. Let's not dwell on it. Well, that's just it. See, I, I don't feel that I've made a mistake. And, well, I would appreciate it if you didn't yell at me in front of the entire office. Excuse me, what? Um, the yelling. Oh. You disapprove. I'm sorry. Did I... Did I hurt your feelings? No. No, no. I, I, I just don't feel that it's necessary. It, it, well, it certainly doesn't help me, and I think that... Well, I'm glad you brought this up. Great. Because I found that an office can't run if the lines of communication are not open. Right, right, yes. So, in that case... Let's make a few things clear. Okay, great, great. No, this, this is helpful. I mean, it's for you. What did I tell you the first day? Your thoughts are nothing. You are nothing. And yet you have the nerve to walk into my office and tell me... That I, 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 please shut up. At least allow me the courtesy of finishing what I have to say. That's the very least that you can do after I've had to endure your insults. This is a bad time. Who do you think you are, you snot-faced little punk? Let me make this clear for you, okay? And now try to follow me, because I'm going to be moving in a kind of circular motion. So if you pay attention, there will be a point. You are nothing. If you were in my toilet bowl, I wouldn't bother flushing it. My bath mat means more to me than you. you see this? This means more to the office than you. And yet, do you hear any complaints when I do this? These pencils more important. These pens more important. These paper clips more important. You miserable little crying baby. You don't like it here, leave. There are thousands of people who would kill for your spot, who would kill for the opportunity to be here. I could spit and hit somebody who did this job better than you. There's a fast track in the top line. I don't see you breaking any speed records. Why can't you show a little backbone? Ha, ha. I don't think the yelling is necessary. Gotta be a little more thick skinned, you turd. You gotta be a man to do it, Bob! Well, obviously, this is not what we mean by feedback. This is an exaggerated um, sample of an apprenticeship model where the, um, the teacher just tells the apprentice what to do and how to do. So the feedback here is something uh, different. The fourth step is called the post conference. When the supervisor and the, the cooperating teacher uh, go through their data, uh, they get together with the teacher trainee, uh, like all parties, all at the same room, and uh, they share the data they collected while observation and share it with the teacher trainee. That's why what you write or what kind of data you collected should be um, objective because you're going to share it with the teacher trainee. And uh, the both parties, both the supervisor and the cooperating teacher provide constructive feedback, uh, support and guidance uh, to the trainee. The feedback should in no way seem overly negative to the teacher trainee to prevent him or her from being defensive and consider this as an adversarial process. So let's have a look at the role of the supervisor. Who is? Here we go. Now that I think about it, I'm psyched that I'd like to talk to my evaluation. It'll give me a chance to finally see what he truly thinks of me. Look, Doogie, I'm up to my cha cha and busy work, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a rain check on your report card. Just have you do it yourself. You didn't even fill out my name. Well, no, I think it's John or Jitty or Jib or Boo. Mm. Oh gosh, it's in the J family. But if you get in trouble, just ask the nurses for help. I mean, myself? Did you describe me as warm, professional, or both? I describe you as I'm on my lunch. I don't know whether it'd be easier or harder myself. I mean, either way. Can't you see I'm watching my stories? Dr. Cox, have you been here the whole time? No. I just came in through the couch door. Move. I thought you said you were too busy to do my evaluation. I am. Didn't her daddy sell the coal mine? Contract didn't stay. Oh, that's interesting. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Evaluation. Oh, great. I thought it was going to take a little longer, so the marching band won't be here until this evening. Enjoy. I think you'll find it's a good read. Hey, Nibby, this thing actually does matter, so tell me, were you completely honest with yourself? Yeah. Stay right into the camera there, Hotshot. Now, you can have this thing back any time you want. You're going to have to bark like a dog, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to bark like a dog. That's your call. <laughs> Well, obviously, 
this is not a supervision that we are referring to or a self-evaluation that we are referring to. Um, now the last step, the reflection. The teacher trainee is provided with the opportunity to reflect on his or her teaching, and this reflection is given equal consideration to the feedback provided both by the supervisor and the cooperating teacher. As a result of the process, uh, all parties prepare an action plan for the next observation so that uh, when they identify the trainees uh, areas of development, uh, they pick some of them or just one of them and focus on that area only in the next observation uh, to see how well the trainee is developing himself or herself. The, this plan provides a structure for the next observation. If uh, this is the final meeting of the term after the last observation, uh, both the supervisor and the cooperating teacher make their joint evaluation on trainee's performance. Um, so what is the proof regarding the effectiveness of CSM. As I said, this was a part of our Tibitak Evrena project. And during this project, we have scientifically proven that uh, the use of these techniques uh, of critical uh, clinical supervision model uh, works to develop teacher trainees as well as cooperating teachers and uh, supervisors, supervisory skills and uh, professional development. Uh, this was a three-year project, and it was an international project that we carried out with uh, the University of Georgia State University. Um, the project, uh, it was found out that, that the, the experimental group had consistently higher scores than those of the control group when their uh, videos, lessons were examined and evaluated. This was one of the first studies to prove the effectiveness and of a reflective teaching practice model. As you remember at the somewhere at the beginning of this uh, presentation, I mentioned that there were less or there were lack of uh, scientific proofs that reflective process actually works. And similarly, although CSM uh, was being used uh, for a very long time, uh, all the supporters were theoretically supporting the CSM. There was no, not much scientific um, results data showing the effectiveness of it. Nowadays, more research uh, is being um, conducted by researchers all around, including Turkey. Uh, moreover, it was also found that the trainees and the cooperating teachers in the experimental group had greater satisfaction levels uh, with the, the supervisor. The findings revealed the benefits of having a structured teaching practice during which triadic relationships between the trainee, the cooperating teacher, and the supervisors, uh, supervisor uh, are emphasized. Uh, the findings also indicated that systematized teaching practice with regular feedback and observations strengthen the interaction between the parties. The differences between the supervisors uh, in the experimental and control group in the study, in terms of number of observation, the amount and quality of feedback, which you remember was kind of the, the weak spot of the earlier model, um, as well as the reflective practice had a tremendous effect on teacher qualifications. The findings also revealed that the experimental group had the requisite knowledge to develop high expectations of their supervisors, uh, identify their own needs, and evaluate the necessary qualification of uh, a supervisor and develop a more critical stance in making judgments about the teaching practice. Uh, the results from the project show that CSM can alleviate many of the identified problems. The findings of the research is also important as it is the first study that lays its claims on scientific data-driven findings. Earlier claims about the effectiveness of CSM or models alike mostly relied on a theoretical background. Um, so 
if we go back to the, the current development in teaching practice in Turkey, uh, we see in uh, the renewal in 2018, we see that the, the practicum uh, has been extended to two terms, six hours at each term. Uh, Ministry of National Education has launched teaching practice evaluation system in MEBBIS to increase cooperating teachers' involvement in the process, as well as to follow the teacher trainee's development. In addition uh, to final evaluation of the trainee, process evaluation with open-ended forms have been put into use that supervisors uh, use to evaluate students' uh, teacher trainees' performances. In addition to the attendance and involvement of the trainee, MEBIS can follow how involved the supervisor and the cooperating teacher is in the process. Uh, ministry ministry um, has been providing in service training for the cooperating teacher regarding MEBIS and CSM techniques. After the training, the CTs who are successful in the training will work with the uh, trainees as a cooperating teacher in the process. So those who do not have this training will no longer be a cooperating teacher. So this is very good and important. Now uh, the, the trainees are no longer going to rely on specific individual skills, knowledge, and experiences when giving feedback. So this is what happened in the ministry. Now, how about the higher education council faculties and university supervisors? Um, well, first of all, the requirements for being a supervisor is determined and identified. We have a certain criteria to act as a supervisor during the process. Education faculties were not adequately informed, unfortunately, about the CSM model. So this kind of went uh, one way from the Ministry of National Education to the cooperating schools, but unfortunately, Higher Education Council, uh, I guess, uh, did not adequately informed about the model. The supervisors didn't receive a training or information regarding the process and techniques to be used. Of course, being a trainer at the, the faculty, at a university, we all have a repertoire of uh, certain techniques, certain strategies, feedback strategies, data collection strategies. But these are, you know, um, kind of dependent on, again, individuals knowledge or experiences or educational background. So, um, and, and information regarding what's going on or what the model requires might have been necessary to carry this process together and more effectively um, together with the cooperating teachers. Well, I would say that there is still a need for a guide or a manual for the faculties, for the supervisors uh, to carry out the process as planned. So in conclusion, I, it's just an hour, I'm about to finish. A model like CSM seems to fill in the gaps and overcomes the problems of the current teaching practice due to its organized structure, which provides systematic feedback to the trainee. It only helps the trainee, uh, it not only helps the trainee, uh, its structure enables uh, both the supervisor and the cooperating teacher to reflect on their performance, further improving their um, practice. However, mutual benefits can only be received if the faculties and the university supervisors are given more information about the techniques of CSM and the whole process uh, as it is. It is no doubt that the quality of teacher education is heavily influenced by the skills and experiences of the uh, supervisors. Their knowledge, understanding, willingness, and contribution to the process are very important. Current standardization efforts of teaching practice by using an effective supervisory model like CSM is hoped to bring about change in teacher education in Turkey, again, on condition that both parties, uh, supervisors as well, uh, were informed about the process. 
So these are some of my references that I was able to copy out here. And that will be all. Thank you very much for being here and uh, spending this time with me. I'll now stop sharing and try to read your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isimo Cham. Thank you very much. Uh, great presentation. Uh, well, before I refer to the uh, questions and comments in the chat box, there is something yeah. that I really want to learn. You mentioned that originally 400 teachers were trained, and then these teachers trained uh, 95,000 yes. teachers. Is not this, only English teachers. Yes, that's what I was going to say, because in Turkey, we don't have 95,000 no. English no. teachers. So I was surprised. No. Okay. Now, has there been any follow up? Uh, yes. Has anyone checked whether these teachers, 95,000, we're mm -hmm. talking about a huge number. Mm -hmm. Are they qualified? Have they mm -hmm. acquired? the necessary skills? Have they become competent to be mentors? Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, there are several studies. While uh, Ayla Hujam had her master's thesis as a follow-up to this process, and Mehmet Sarac Hujam here is writing his PhD thesis uh, as a follow-up on the, the process, uh, I, uh, together with the, the ministry in Bursa, um, um, yeah, ministry in Bursa, just, just for the Bursa schools, I had another project uh, aiming for the follow up uh, and how well, well, I just used the English teachers in my sample for the project. There are some studies, of course, there are flows. Um, a system can only be effective or qualified uh, as long as the implementers are qualified about it. So um, there are, we are writing reports. Actually, I wrote a report uh, to uh, mm -hmm. uh, again about the, the results of the project as a follow-up. Mm -hmm. And I have also sent the results uh, of the thesis to uh, that we have received from Ayla Hojam's thesis. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're trying, we're continuing to inform uh, the ministry about what is going can, on can, in can the Can you field. also inform us, please? Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't work with the <laughs> ministry, so yes, yeah, that inform them, but I would, love to, I would love to learn. It just one word. It, uh, it, uh, ha, have they been evaluated mm -hmm. whether they are competent enough to be mentors? Yes uh, or no? Yes. They feel more confident when giving feedback. Uh, they feel more effective. They said that they know what they're doing throughout the process. Uh, they have better interaction with the trainees as well as uh, they could also interact with the supervisor as well. This is my data from Bursa and okay. only from English teachers. I of don't know. Of course, I understand. Other... I understand. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mehmet Ocha, when he completes yeah. his PhD dissertation, yes. he can come up with a more satisfactory results, maybe yes. covering a, a, a larger number of teachers because... This is all self-reflection, right? So there, there hasn't been a triangulation of the that data. Mm. So this is self-reflection only. Yes. Do we have yes. peer reflection, supervisor reflection at the same uh, time? No, okay. uh, we can't because they haven't received the training, Hoja. Yeah. Yani none of us at the universities, I don't know if I, I have colleagues from different universities. I don't know if 
my colleagues know that we are we have been using CSM for the last three years, and I don't know if they are aware of the techniques used in CSM. I'd like to ask them. I uh, we in our faculty we have given a short information uh, on the model uh, three years ago. Uh, I know that our faculty knows a little, um, some information at least, but I don't know. I don't. Mesela... At Gazi University. We started using reflective teaching model yeah. in 2000. So uh, I don't know what they are doing right now. I retired after, uh, you yeah. know, when universities uh, lost their university uh, <laughs> status, I, I retired. But uh, the problem with reflection is self-reflection should always be uh, supported by the results of peer reflection and supervised reflection. Mm -hmm. Because culturally speaking, we are not very good at reflection. We all know that. We're not, we're not. We are not. So definitely um, someone has to shake us a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. You know, just say, hey, come on, reflect. Mm -hmm. You're just flattering yourself. Stop that, reflect. <laughs> I know. I don't know, Jam. Uh, in the during the project we had, we had three parties having, you know, do their evaluations about the process, about themselves. But then again, uh, we have also submitted this uh, evaluation forms of different stakeholders to the ministry and they're not being in use now, but we have suggested that we use this as, you know, uh, like to follow up this triadic relationships, we need to evaluate the process, yes. operating teacher, supervisor and training. We have submitted this, but we're not using this. Okay. Um, uh, well, this requires a very intense and a very long study to be carried out to collect data from all parties all at the same time, which could be another uh, thesis, PhD thesis yeah. maybe, for yeah. those yeah. who are interested yeah. uh, here. Um, uh, the, uh, but, uh, Susan Ocham, if she is still here with us, because we know that uh, she may sometimes have internet problems, uh, yeah. wrote her uh, PhD dissertation uh, on action research where three teachers uh, am i wrong susan ojam you use three teachers right where they reflected on their own practice mm -hmm. uh the uh, the issue is uh, and that was a very successful dissertation uh please find a copy and refer to that um, a very successful dissertation uh, azra ojam says uh, what are the activities? What type of activities do we refer to when we say self-reflection? Now, Azra mm -hmm. when you look at what you have done, that is self-reflection, okay? You may record yourself or um, you may audio tape yourself or you may just sit down and think, what have I done? <laughs> If you have a good memory, <laughs> that is self-reflection, okay? Sometimes we strongly suggest teachers keep a, a, a journal because when you write, you know, it's very much like, that's why it is called clinical. You know, it's more like a psychological therapy. <laughs> if yes, you write, well, the, the techniques yeah. are actually coming from psychology. That's why yeah. it's clinical yeah. supervision. Yes, that's, ah, that's why. In fact, Esimocha is going to support me, I hope. That's why the supervisor or the mentor, whatever you want to call them, tries not to judge the person. Mm -hmm. Very much like a psychiatrist or psychologist listening and reflecting. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you did that. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? What did you achieve? Was that what you wanted to achieve? Mm -hmm. Was there something else? Very much like a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you do that. It requires a, 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 a 
totally different patience level. Believe mm. me. <laughs> oh my yes. God. You want to say it, but you have to hold it, hold it, and then give the data. Look what you did and yes, tell me yes, what you say. Yes, I know. And as I've said before, culturally, yeah. oh my God, we love criticism so much. Right. We just cannot keep our mouth shut. No. We are ready to <laughs> attack. I, 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 I can reflect on my stupid <laughs> mentor okay, skills <laughs> i do criticize people very harshly mm. i am trying to change my language i'm trying to change my attitude but believe me guys it is even more difficult harder than learning a foreign language mm. learning the language of feedback that is a totally different Oh my area. god. I know. But area. the good thing is CSM is teaching you these techniques. Yeah, but it's, it, it, the problem is Mojam is uh, uh, using teaching those. never entails learning. No. That is the problem. No. So we say that this take this uh, CSM teaches you no. Mm -hmm. It uh, explains it to me, but I mm -hmm. need to learn myself. Yes. Okay, so uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, this is effort from my perch. Uh, okay, uh, Dennis Sojam says this is my second, even third, with the high school in internship, and I can definitely say that I benefit from this approach mm -hmm. and can find opportunities to improve my teaching. Excellent, very good. That's very good. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Good okay. feedback for all of us. <laughs> um, I can't see. Oh, okay. Mertoja says, huh. I wonder how were the teachers who got trained by academics huh. uh, able to train their colleagues? So it's, it's very much like um, a domino uh, the effect. You train them, they train uh, the other teachers. Uh, academics being the, the ones that are in the faculty, yes. that's a very tricky area, uh, Mertujam. We tried that in our faculty. There have been a lot of objections from <laughs> professors, associate professors, research assistant. A lot of the people said, we know these things. We know these strategies. And um, a lot of them refused to be a part of this process. And it is very sad uh, that our colleagues um, cannot reflect. So, uh, well, that was one of the deficiencies. Uh, 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 the I think uh, Matoja is referring to how those original 400 people hmm. trained 95,000 people. Oh. I think that is the question. I don't think that it is related uh, Mertojam, am I right? Did I misunderstand your question? Can you please write in the chat or you may even... Um... Oh, no. You're right, I don't know, Jam. Uh, okay. Jam okay. says that, okay. What happened is uh, we had three sets of formator training, Mertojam, mm -hmm. in uh, three different cities of Turkey. So we gathered uh, formators mm -hmm. by the help of uh, the, the local um areas you know each city uh, selected their teachers to be trained and um we kind of gave this training to those people when they're finished with their training and the number was actually determined by the size of the city the number of the schools uh, you know it was different for each city and these teachers went back to their cities and uh, the local, uh, what do we call, districts uh, actually select, opens up this training to mm. school, informs mm -hmm. the schools. And um, the <coughs> trainings are organized depending on which schools, which teachers would like to be a part of this process as cooperating schools or cooperating teachers. Mm. So at first it was, uh, you know, kind of 
voluntary compulsory because we needed those mm. but now it is mostly uh voluntary because we had enough number of teachers trained uh -huh. mm. uh, to serve as cooperating teachers and we have several teachers several formatory teachers for each city and uh, while the trainings are conducted in the cities we as academicians go and uh, supervise the process still for the three and a half years uh, me and my colleagues in bursa visit uh, the training process and be informed about uh, the process how it is done answer the questions and um, actually ministry requires other academicians at other cities and universities to go and supervise the process i don't know if they are doing it or not, but um, we have been asked each time there is a, a program, uh, such training program, we are there to assist. Okay. So this is how it works. Thank you very much. By the way, um, just a quick warning. I keep saying academics. Mm -hmm. uh, Ismoja keeps saying academicians. So we're not referring to different people. Uh, academics are uh, more like uh, university personnel who are into teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, so they also have academic uh, aspect in their life, but they are into teaching. They are teaching like we do. We never leave the classroom. Academicians are more like research Theory. people. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they actually uh, do not go into the classroom. They do the research. Uh, they carry out the research. Uh, so that's why I do not identify myself as an academician because I have never left the classroom. <laughs> I have always been teaching, teaching, teaching. Uh, I know Hojam says, teachers without the certificate cannot be a CT, that's okay. However, after the training, they should be given some follow-up activities to see how well they are doing as a CT because some do not or maybe cannot implement the model as it is supposed to be. Yes. Excellent point, Ailojam. I wish you had a better, a fixed microphone so that you could say these uh, yourself. Uh, Azra Ojam uh, had a question, but this question is more like related to a reflective uh, reflection in teacher development. I shouldn't say verses, but reflection in learning. So if you don't want to answer, I respect that <laughs> uh, because it's not within the, uh, uh, the frame of your study here. If I can find it, it was long ago. She was asking something about um, students not leaving their old habits um okay ah here we go i found it uh i'm gonna read it as it is so we will try to uh understand what it says because sometimes okay. people write very quickly how can we as a teacher make balance between reflective practice and reflex reflexivity via critical reflections in our students' styles? Um, I don't think I understand the question. I think what is uh, what Azraujam is trying to ask, Azraujam, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. How can we use hmm. our reflective teaching hmm. to help our students to become reflective so mm -hmm. that they can also change their learning. Ah, okay. I think that's what I understand. But Azra Ojan, please feel free because, you know, you are the speaker, you know what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> well, you're a great interpreter. Oh Azra my God. said yes. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, um, I believe that it's, I think it's for autonomy as well. I only believe that autonomous teachers uh, can you know 
help their students become autonomous as well. Uh, teaching or saying that autonomy is important is not going to make your students autonomous. Uh, telling your students be reflective, reflection is important, is not going to make them uh, reflective. So um, yes, it is very important that we practice reflection uh, ourselves. And if possible, um, we kind of uh, tell our students how that process works. So what we did, Shuro Jung was here and she still is here. Uh, what we did uh, two, three years ago was an action research uh, to reflect on what we are doing in our classes. We both teach teaching English to young learners and the results, the success was not as expected. And we were trying to find out what happened, what was the result of this decrease um, of success in our students. And then we, we kind of conducted a research. So uh, it gave us some idea about what to do, what to change, what to do differently. When we finished the research, we reported the results of the research to our students uh, as a part of being uh, reflective. And when we publish it, we also shared it uh, with the students as well so that they know that we are actually genuinely interested in improving ourselves, changing mm -hmm. the things that seems not to be effective enough. And I benefited from the process very much. Mm -hmm. The results kind of, uh, in a way, uh, approved uh, that we some of the things that we're doing was good. Uh, but also they pointed out that we need to do something differently to because what we were having trouble was critical thinking ability. Uh, the classes were organized so that the students should use their critical thinking ability um, in learning the topics in and we have reflection in the practice sessions. The students prepare, they have micro teachings. First of all, when they finish the teaching, they have to self-evaluate themselves, reflect on themselves. Then the other participants in the classroom do peer evaluation and talk about the strengths and weaknesses. And mm. finally, we as teachers, Shulia Jem and I in our classes, uh, give the final feedback as an overall understanding of what's going mm. on. So we have been practicing reflective teaching in our our classes while teaching but mm. in addition to that we are also whenever we see a problem uh, we are open to action research it and then share the results that you know uh, with our students this is what uh, we do I do with my colleague here and I'm sure a lot of my colleagues also um, do similar things or different things for the same purpose but yes I believe that uh, I myself have to be reflective, uh, yes. be a reflective teacher before I tell others to be reflective. Okay, so you also become as a teacher a model, I'm trying. role model yeah. Uh, yeah. for the prospective teachers, and the prospective teachers will become role yeah. models for their own students, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, yes. If you think that you uh, are the goddess or god, you know, you have mastered everything and now you're the sign <laughs> of ELT, uh, then of course you're not going to improve yourself and you're not going to be a very good model for your students. So uh, I guess, uh, yes, we should train our, maybe train is not a very good verb. We should help our students to learn how to reflect take responsibility, observe themselves objectively. Mm -hmm. It is going to be hard, so you need to start at a very early age. Yes. Because at home, parents are not doing a very good job, believe me. You know, we live in a culture where when the child falls down, we beat the floor. So the child learns at a very early age that it's always someone else's fault. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's not always the fault, as Ismoja has said. It's sometimes to be objective on your strengths as well. What yes. you can accomplish and what you can do, those are also important. Very important. Yes. So, yeah. Um, it's going to take time, 
mm, it's going to take a lot of effort, believe me, because we are dealing with a culture, full culture here. Mm -hmm. uh, so good luck. <laughs> what can I say? Good luck to all of us. <laughs> yeah, good luck. But never, never stop trying. Yes. And uh, hopefully, Mehmet Ojan, when you complete your dissertation, uh, we can have you as our guest speaker uh, and uh, you can uh, just summarize briefly, of course. I mean, a PhD dissertation is a hectic work, but you can briefly summarize your results. We would love to hear that. I will be happy, Ojam. It's mm -hmm. almost finished. <laughs> Very I'm good. Just... How much time uh, do you have more? Uh, probably in a month. That's I'm great. Just, I'm just I'm just reviewing my discussions again and again. Okay. Um, so could you please in the chat box uh, write your email address? Of course, Ajahn. So that I can contact you and uh, because I believe uh, our participants would also like to hear the uh, follow-up part of this. Uh, so I we will have note huge it amount down. of data, Hojam. We have yes. huge amount of data all around Turkey, indeed. Only Me, Udr, but jump. I think only we don't have uh, data from Udr, so but okay, uh, we can live 80, without that. 80, okay. So I can't say all around <laughs> Turkey, but yeah. we have data from 80 uh, provinces. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, Mehmet Ojam, just keep in mind that uh, our participants are actually in teaching, they are not interested in data, they are results. Yeah. They are <laughs> results. interested in results. <laughs> So keep yeah. your data to your professors, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give okay. us any statistical information. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't know how to thank you because we have, I have personally, I have learned uh, something new. What the, um, the authority is, maybe I should say, are doing, uh, how much they have accomplished, how much more they need to do. And... Um, you have opened a new window for me uh, and people in the, um, ah, okay. Uh, ask about the movie's names. What, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> the, the clips that I use. Uh, okay, Hojam, can you please? <laughs> um, well, I don't know, one was Scraps. The last one, the other one uh, with the supervisor was um, from a movie, which I don't know. It's been a while that I found these clips, actually. Um, it was a very hard search. I am genuinely not remembering the names. OK, uh, 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 Marto Jam, uh, honestly, uh, one of them was from Kevin Spacey. Yes. Yeah, Kevin Spacey. But I don't remember the movie. Uh, was accused of sexual assault and was proven to be guilty. Do not watch his films, movies. Oh, really? Yes. He's a terrible person oh, and okay. uh, you should never, never, never support people like that. These are monsters. This is my personal opinion, of course. Uh, well... Uh, I think the first one was from Office. Yes, The, the office. office. Yeah, that's yes, that's a, that, yes. that's a great comedy. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isimoja, people are thanking in the chat box. You can see that uh, it has you. been very informative, very inspiring. Thank you very much, and um, hope to be together with you again sometime Hopefully, soon yes, I and would love Mehmet that. Ocham, I will be after you okay so I will yes. give you two three more months and then <laughs> okay. I will get you <laughs> I'm a terrible hunter poor Isim Hojam oh, older Mojam, yeah. it was <laughs> he it has was suffered a, a lot <laughs> <laughs> It, it was a pleasure for me. First of all, estağfurullah hocam. Yani bir şey öğretmek değil amacımız. But this sharing is kind of very beneficial. And I love that there have been lots of comments uh, on the chat box. That's very pleasing, showing that, you know, all the participants are interested in uh, what I was sharing with you. Again, thank you very much to Inget and Aydan hocam. 
for inviting me to sharing this time with you. Uh, I've missed this. I really missed uh, being together with my colleagues. Uh, this past two years was not very easy on all of us. And it's a great pleasure to see those faces that I haven't been, you know, I haven't seen for a very long time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, Inget is, uh, uh, is special. It is. Special. That's why we say together. It's the one and only. We stand. <laughs> together we stand. Well, Thank this you. is this yeah. is great opportunity for everybody because you're recording and publishing it on yes. YouTube. Yes. Uh, this is a free service for all practitioners and academics, you know, <laughs> all around Turkey. That's uh, it's the most professional general, development. <laughs> that's what. That's why we are in this profession. I yes. mean, our aim has never been making money. Yes. Uh, of course, it would be lovely to make some money. Sure. Who can say <laughs> no to some money? But as sure. a part of our mission, I believe, that's why all of the academics in Turkey, such as yourself, without hesitating, accept this. They say, of course, we will do a session mm -hmm. because this is for our colleagues. Yes. So this is this is our service to our profession, our colleagues. Yes. So uh, without you, what can I do sometimes? Hocam, böyle little, little, in the middle, we are a yes. great community. <laughs> of course, of course. Hocam, thank you again. Thank you very much. And my dear colleagues, thank you very much for being with us. Hope to see you next week with another guest speaker. Take very good care of yourself. Stay away from that hectic virus. Okay? <laughs> Take bye -bye, care. Bye-bye. Have bye -bye. a good weekend. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.